Malignant gliomas are a set of tumors that arise in the brain. We do not know for sure what the cell of origin is, but we think it's a probably a cell that's called a stem cell that goes awry and gives rise to these tumors. Malignant gliomas is a relatively general term. It denotes tumors that tend to be very malignant. They grow in the brain by both dividing and causing a mass as well as infiltrating into the brain. They don't metastasize to the body like other cancers, they just metastasize in the brain itself. The current standard of care for malignant glioma is to try, first of all, to take him out by surgery. We try to get what's called a gross toral resection. That probably removes close to 95, 98% of the active tumor that we can see. But there's a lot of microscopic disease that we sometimes don't even see on the MRI scan that still needs to be addressed. After the tumor has been resected for uh, about six weeks, then patients will undergo concurrent chemotherapy with timozolomide and radiation therapy. The timozolomide is given as an oral drug, and the radiation therapy is given to the area of the tumor resection and surrounding brain. During this time period, the patient is followed with MRI scans uh, fairly frequently. Uh, six to eight weeks to make sure that the tumor doesn't come back. We're very good at removing the main tumor mass, but really what sets up the tumor from coming, uh, sets up the tumor to come back are these tumor cells that invade and migrate throughout the brain, and we don't have very good ways of stopping this. One of our areas of research that started out at the bench side and then progressed all the way to the clinic has been to try to find new treatments for these tumors. So one of the treatments involves getting common viruses, which we all think are pathogenic, right? We hear about Ebola virus, HIV, all these viruses that we all run away from. But the one great thing about viruses is that we evolved over millennia to enter and infect the cells of your body in a very efficient fashion. So the trick is, can we make a virus that's going to do that, but only do that to the tumor cells and not do that to normal cells? And the answer is yes. You can engineer a virus just like you engineer a drug, so it'll become a tumor-selective, tumor-killing virus. So we've done that with one common virus this is the virus that provokes cold sores in your mouth. It's called herpes simplex virus type 1. The reason we chose this virus is because it's actually a very efficient killer of cells. It can get in very rapidly. It can destroy them fast. The other nice thing about the herpes virus is that what we think is when the virus infects the tumor cells and destroys it, it not only does that, but it also, because the virus is very antigenic, in other words, the virus can really also rev up stimulate the immune response. It also creates almost like a vaccine-like effect. On this slide, I am trying to show what an oncolytic virus will do to a tumor. The oncolytic virus has infected some of the tumor cells, and the tumor cells that are infected are shown by that arrow on the far left. As that oncolytic virus propagates, in other words, as it kills those tumor cells and makes lots of other viruses, it will infect other surrounding tumor cells. And in the middle panel, what I show is that that tumor is turned completely blue because that virus is basically spread throughout that entire tumor. And as it does that, it kills off the tumor. And by eight days on the far right, it leaves a hole where the tumor was. However, normal brain is still there. And so that's what we would like to see happen with patients. Uh, so we now have engineered a new virus based, again, on herpes that we think is going to be very, very tumor selective, particularly for those cells that we call stem-like cells in the brain that cause, we think, are the initial cells that cause these brain tumors. And we're hoping to start a new clinical trial here 
at the Brigham and Dana-Farber using one of these engineered herpes viruses. In our laboratory, we were very interested not only in trying to find new therapies against these tumors, but also understanding these tumors. But we have to remember that tumor cells don't live by themselves in the brain. They have to interact with their microenvironment. They have to interact with blood vessels, for example, blood vessels have to bring nourishment to the tumor. They have to interact with normal cells such as astrocytes and neurons in the tumor uh, to kind of sometimes uh, usurp their functions uh, to migrate and to uh, infiltrate into the brain. So for example, one of the factors we're very interested in is a piece of genetic material called microRNA. MicroRNAs are new pieces of genetic materials that were discovered recently. So we've been trying to find out which microRNAs allow the tumor cell to communicate with its microenvironment. Uh, one of the other things we found is that tumor cells also release these, these uh, uh, packets of information called exosomes. And uh, they also allow the tumor cells to communicate with blood vessels, um, and other normal cells in the brain so that these blood vessels and other normal cells come in and cater to the tumor and allow the tumor to do the bad things that it does in the brain. So I think in the future what will happen is when you come to surgery for your tumor, we will get the tumor, we will be able to study it. Not only will we be able to sequence the DNA, the DNA pr basically provides the software information to the tumor cell to allow it to do what it does, but also we can sequence its microRNAs, look at the exosomes, look at how they interact with the microenvironment, and then based on that information, come up with the best treatment that we can individualize to each patient.